Hey everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a op org for iBolic for your TLP suite. Um, yeah, I'm going to go pretty in depth in here. I'm going to show you each asset that they provide you and then how to fill it out. So the first thing is the graphics packet right here. So in this graphics packet, I'm going to just show you the important things that you need to know. You don't need this first page. The second page you don't really need. This third page is the area of operations. This just shows you where you're going to be doing your mission. Um, they're going to show you like this is your limit on the top. This is your limit on the bottom, on the sides. You need this. Your area of interest, you need this. This is going to show you a bigger version outside of your area of operations um, to show you what other things should you be concerned about. In this case, we got to be concerned about this ADA and then these mortars that are outside of our area of operations. This is the GTAL. There's two um, duplicates, so let me just X this one out, but you need this one. So this is just going to show you like, all right, for our friendly forces, which roads are they going to go? So this is our avenue of approach one. This is one way we can go to the objective. This is the second way we could go to the objective. This is the third way. And then same for the bad guys right here. And then you see all these green stuff uh, outlines. This is showing us what is dense vegetation, um, what is restricted terrain, and then severely restricted terrain. So you can see right here, restricted, severely restricted. So restricted means like it's pretty hard. It's like very um, thick brush and stuff. And then severely restricted is like it's almost impossible to go through. So in this case, you can see right here, there's a, there's a really big swamp in this area. It's going to be almost impossible to go through a very thick swamp. So that's why it's severely restricted and it has the slashes on here. Use this map or use this graphic. Do not redraw all of this onto your uh, battle board or your briefing board. Um, it's just a waste of time. You, you, they already printed this out for you. Just use this. Next is the enemy disposition. You're going to use this. You're going to use this for one dis disposition level up. Basically, what this is, is it's showing where the other enemies are at, where the other platoons are at in this uh, area of operations, and what their mission is. Like, what is their task and what is their purpose? So, like, in this case, this guy's task is to fix the enemy, and the purpose of fixing them is to prevent the massing against the sea debt decisive operation so they all have their reasons on what their missions are so you need that enemy composition you need this because you're going to see which squad you're going to attack in our case it's going to be third squad how do we know because number one it says so1 and where so1 so it usually matches second thing is if you read the enemy scheme of maneuver here, and also our um, our plan. Our platoon is at the very front of the line, and then in, their, in the enemy scheme of maneuver, they shoot at the first guys. So that's probably who we're fighting against based on what, we, what I've read in here. The next thing is the uh, red checkbook, which basically shows you the enemy's weapons, what their symbols look like, what their range is and what the equivalent is. When you brief and you talk about the enemy's weapons, you always need to say they have three QBZ 95s, which is equivalent to our M4s, so on and so forth. The range, you use this when you uh, draw on your uh, battle board. Um, like you, you, here, let me show you real quick. Let me draw. It. So, like, let's say, for example, they have a QBZ 95. You're going to draw their sig symbol. So you're like, they're right here on this map. Their range is going to be 400 meters. So you like draw that on there so that whenever you're briefing, you're like, okay, we can see from here, like if we pass this line, like they're going to shoot at us. So our safe spots like over here, like under this phase line. So that, that's why uh, this is important. So you're going to use that friendly disposition two levels up, you're not using this. This is a company level op order. So the company 
so one level up is going to be a battalion, right? So that's one level up. Their two level up is going to be a brigade. So that's why they have this in here. Uh, but you don't need this because you're a platoon. So what's your one level up? It's going to be company. What's your two level up? It's going to be the battalion. So you don't need this. So useless. Don't need it. This you need. Just change the one level up to two level up. Um, as I already explained up here. And then this is the COA sketch. This is what the company commander's plan is for all of the different platoons on how they're going to attack. This you can use actually as a friendly disposition. So you can use this for your one level up. So you can use your, because why? Because you see there's a platoon right here, platoon right here, platoon right here, platoon right here. And they already have the tasks and the purposes all written out for you. So you just use this for your um, one level up friendly disposition. This is a map for phase line one, not phase line, phases one and phases two. So you can use this to brief. I would use this. Um, so that way, when you're talking about your phase one, phase two, you're talking about, hey, we're going to go from here. We're going to go this route. Then we get to here. Then we cross this phase line. We go hit checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, all that stuff. So you can use this. This um, I wouldn't really use. It's kind of hard to see as well. Um, but it's there for you. I, I personally didn't use it in iBullock. Same with this one. I personally did not use this. This um, is only somewhat helpful. Um, in your TT Lodak at the bottom of your company op board, you're going to see which assets are given to your platoon for firing. So if this is assigned to you and this is assigned to you, like, okay, now you know where the targets are, like which area. So that's the only important part for this. But for the rest of it, you don't really need to know every, every single um, pre-planned target. And then this is a big picture of the area, the objective, and then another big picture area of the objective. So I would use like one, I, I'd probably use this one. Uh, this one sucks. And then uh, pro tip, just find this area on Google Maps and then just print it out because the, the sheets that they give you here is just so pixelated. It's so hard to see. Um, but those are the things that you'll use. All right, let's dive into the leader's book. So the first part is the war note. So if your task score, you're going to draw out your um, platoon, basically. So if we look at here, if we look at the company level task score, this is kind of how they draw it out. So we're going to do something very similar, but we're going to draw it at a platoon level because we only need to draw our platoon, right? So you do that. Our weapon squad's right here. So make sure you do this properly. Our situation, it's all in here. It's all in here. So just abbreviate a ton and condense. You don't need to write everything down on here. Um, here at Eyeball, you have to handwrite everything. You can't type it, unfortunately. That's why it takes so long. So just try to condense and shorten it as much as possible. Who's the platoon fighting? Well, it's going to be third squad. We're, we're fighting the enemy's third squad. And I already explained earlier why, how we identified that. Area of operation, that's going to be down here. You just copy and paste it into here. Area of interest, you don't need to say anything. You just leave that blank. Battalion mission, scroll down. That's the brigade, we're almost there. Oh, right there, battalion mission. So we write all of this into here and then the battalion commander's intent. So the purpose, the key task and the end state, you write that all in here. For our company mission, it's right in here. So we write that in here. And then same thing, commander's intent, the expanded purpose, key tasks, and end state, you write that all in here. 
Now our mission, where do we find that? That is going to be in the company level con op. So you see right here, con op, uh, and we scroll to third platoon. So third platoon seizes objective bovine in order to allow DO freedom movement to their objective. So that's basically our mission. So the mission of rule of thumb is the five W's, who, what, when, where, why. So who's who? Third platoon. Why? We're, um, what are we doing? We're seizing. Uh, when? We ha don't have that information yet. I'll show you where to get that time. Uh, where? On objective bovine. Why? In order to allow the DO freedom of movement to their objective. Now to find the time, you scroll all the way down. And there's a timeline that the company commander made. So he needs objective bull seas no later than uh, 9th of July at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, so because we need, because objective bull is a bigger objective, there's like smaller objectives within objective bull. Right here, objective bovine, that's what we're going to be attacking. If you read through all of this, you would know. Um, I know we didn't go through it. I'm just trying to keep this short and just show you wh where to find the information and what to copy and paste into the leader's book. But objective bovine is like right here. Um, so if they're trying to capture steer and longhorn, which then completes capturing objective bull as a whole, and he needs all of this captured by seven o'clock, maybe we should say like, I don't know, six o'clock, 630 maybe. So you just write down the mission and then after that, write no later than 0600, right? So that it would sound like, let's scroll, uh, Third platoon seizes objective bovine no later than 0600 in order to allow the DO freedom of movement uh, to their objective. That's what it would sound like. For this, our current location, you just write down where you're currently at when you're planning this. So it's probably going to be training assembly area Nate. The next location, probably going to be attack position Caffey. Objective location, it's going to be objective bovine. Recon team, do you have one? If not, nope, don't write anything. Do you have any recon tasks that you need to do? Um, like send ISR or whatever? Okay, if you do, write that in there. If not, nothing in here. Are there any like normal information requirements you need from this recon? Um, okay, maybe get map reconnaissance uh, and see where their BPs are, see where their obstacles are, write that in there. If you don't, just leave that blank. Again, this is a warno, so it's fine. Coordinating instructions, that is in here as well near the bottom of the op board. So if you scroll down, do, do, do. All right, right here, co coordinating instructions, mop level zero, order of movement. This is where you write down like, all right, first squad, second squad, third squad, fourth squad, like you're gonna be, you're gonna be in the front, you're gonna be in the back. So that's what you can write by yourself. Uh, what routes are you gonna take? You can write that in there as well. Zero and bore site, you don't need to do that. Just cross that out, exit. And then PCC, um, if you wanna add something in there, you can, but you can leave that blank as well. All right, next is the commander's critical information requirements. What does he need to know? Well, he needs to know all of this right here. So you write that in here. Okay, what about friendly information requirements? Okay, we write that all in here. And then priorities of work, priorities of rehearsal. That is in here as well. Right down here, priorities of rehearsals. So you write down those battle drills that he wants you to do, which is the breach of mine wire obstacle, react to the contact, do a platoon attack. Next is the planning timeline. We have a timeline right here. So now you just sketch it out like this. You just put each one in here and only put in the most important ones because this is a small piece of paper. You can't fit everything in here. Uh, on this op board onto here. And then the enemy's planning, you kind of line it up as well on here. If it's not on, if you can't really find it in the um, company op board, just make something up. So like, for example, if we're doing rehearsals during this time, they're probably building their or fortifying their battle positions, or maybe they're just patrolling around the perimeter. 
just make something up, right? And then our platoon planning is okay with um, within the company commander's timeline. Like, what are we doing, right? So just put in the only most important information in here. Now, let's say for example, the company and the platoon planning is the exact same thing. So, like in this case, a platoon rehearsal. Just draw one straight line like this instead of two separate lines and writing the same thing twice. Just draw one straight line and then write the time underneath here. So like it would look like 0, 0700 and then I'd write platoon rehearsal. And then do that and make sure you just write small and all that stuff. Weather and light data, if we go back to the top, it's going to provide us the information right here. All you need to do is put in before morning nautical tie light and then the ending nautical tie light. So you just put that in here like that. Next, uh, scratch that out, scratch that out, scratch that out. You don't really need those. They never really taught us what that meant. Um, the only main two ones you're gonna use is the ambulatory exchange point and then the CCP. So you write in the grid coordinates for these. This, I don't remember what that was, so I just left that blank. For the class one through uh, logistics stuff, that's at the bottom here. So you can see the class one, class five. Fill that in. If it doesn't have something like class four, uh, which is not in the company op order, just leave that blank. Any planning and preparation instructions. Um, if you have anything, write that in here. If not, you can leave that blank as well. For your command and control, who do you who's in charge? So it's gonna be you, right? Platoon leader, and then PSG, and then weasel, first, second, third, squad leader. That's all you need to do. This you can leave blank. This is just the company, uh, where the company commander is gonna be at, the location. And that's pretty much it for the war note. Now, once you fill this war note out <coughs> and you hand it to your cadre member that's grading you. Basically, you don't need to brief that at all. You just give it to him and he just glances at it. And then anything that's um, on the war note, whenever you're briefing your op board, you can say no change because you already wrote it on the war note. So that's gonna help you save time. You have 60 minutes to brief total and you have 45 minutes to reach your decisive point on your uh, brief. So in this case, if we scroll here, we have this timeline, right? But on the actual op org, we have another timeline. What you can go ahead and do is cross that out because you already put that in here. So you just say, no change to the timeline as stated in the war note. Task org, no change to the task org as stated in the war note, right? This task org was already added at the top here. Keep going. All right. So area of operations and area of interest. This first section right here is the area of operation. This red right here is the area of interest. So the cardinal directions, that basically just means north, south, east, west. You don't really need to brief this. I mean, they already understand that, so you can just skip that. The only main thing you can say is just, just to orient you to this map, let me show you the major cities, towns, or geographic features with their distance and direction. So you go into the first graphic that they gave you, which is the area of operations. So you use this piece of paper to brief this. So what you can say is, all right, just to orient you, um, we're in the vicinity in the town of Darby or Columbus. Yes, it was Columbus. Um, we're, we're in the city of Columbus here. Some significant geographic features. You can see the Shy Pond on the, the south uh, east side of the, of the area of operations. Uh, you can see there's also Hills Creek running along the south to north on the east side of the area of operations. So if there's any major terrain features, you can go ahead and use it. You don't need to say a whole lot, to be honest here. Um, so if there's not much, I mean, there's not much, so don't really need to say much. Um, or you can say like, there's a church cemetery over here on this side, whatever, right? 
This no change because you already you already told them during the war no. Trace. These are routes and phase lines. So you can say for trace, I want you to take a look at route vibe down here, running down from the south to north, and then route Simpson uh, that is on the uh, west side of this area of operations. And then for our phase lines, we have phase line this, we have phase line that. If you have a phase line, you would go ahead and say that. If you don't, that's fine. You don't need to say it. And then familiarize. Then you would say, all right, and then to familiarize you with the AO, here's key terrain one, here's key terrain two, here's objective bull, um, here's our checkpoints, um, just any important stuff. And you can use actually another slide that is given to you here, which is the phase one and phase two slide at the bottom. So if I go down right here, so you can say just to familiarize you, key terrain one is here, key terrain two is here. We have three checkpoints all throughout and we have our attack position and our training assembly area. That's all you need to do for the area of operation. Just brush up on it real quick. You'll need to stay there too long. And then let's go into area of interest. Okay. All right, this is our area of interest. Um, from here, you read this also in the area of interest on the, on the, uh, the company op org. Okay, so right here, the area of interest. So whatever information that's provided for you on here, you just put that in this box right here. So is there close air support? Nope. Is there CCA? Nope. Is there artillery? Yes, there's an ADA. There's a Type 92 Yiditon ADA. So you write that in there. Okay, where's the location? Where is it at? Um, I don't know, that's a good question. So if that's not on here, we look at this map right here. So we could just say it's on the outside, like uh, southwest, southeast of the AO. So you just write that in the location. What is the trigger? There is no trigger per information provided in here, so we can leave that blank. But trigger basically means what activates this uh, weapon. So maybe if a Black Hawk helicopter flies um, and they reach this phase line, passing that phase line triggers the enemy's ADA to fire at the Black Hawk. So like that's kind of what trigger means. And then the time and range. Um, well, we see there right here, the range is six kilometers. So we write six km in here. And what does priority mean? That basically means how high of a threat is this to us? Is it a low threat, medium threat, or high threat? And then you also write in um, during which phase is it a high threat. So like, for example, during phase one, when we're just planning, well, we're not going to send any Blackhawks because uh, we have no casualties. So at this time, phase one priority is going to be low. So you write phase one dash low. And then during phase three, when we're attacking and phase four, when we're reconsolidating, we're going to have some casualties. So when we call in the nine line, that um, air defense artillery is going to be uh, shooting at the Black Hawk. So priority is high. So we do phase three dash high, phase four dash high. So that's pretty much what you do in here. You find all this information in the area of interest. All right, moving on, terrain analysis. So it's all in here. So obstacles, write the obstacle names in here. That's natural. So this would be dense woods, rolling hills. Uh, numerous creeks and tributaries, and then you write the location. So it's, let's say north, south, you could say in the vicinity of this uh, location, in the vicinity of objective bull, and you write the effect it has on the enemy. So how does the dense woods affect the enemy? Well, it prevents um, them from seeing us, so it provides us more cover and concealment. For reinforcing, 
that's like the more man-made stuff. So like sea wire, um, battle positions, just write the gener general location they're, they're at, and then write what the intent is for creating one. So for sea wire, their intent is to block us, right? So, all right, the right block. The battle positions, that's probably to fix us in place. Okay, so write fix. So just write in the appropriate reason why they created that. For avenue of approach, that's on the G tau right here. So literally just write each one. Avenue of approach one, avenue of approach two, avenue of approach three, as you see these three right here. And then write the enemy one, avenue of approach four, avenue of approach five. For the type, it's just asking, is it mounted or dismounted? So you write dismounted or mounted for each one, right? Size, like how much does this road or avenue of approach, um, what size element does it support? So if this mounted road, according to the op board, if it says it's a company size element, all right, right company size. So this AOA supports a company size element and their speed, they're coming at 50 kilometers an hour. Again, you find this information inside right here on the avenue of approach. And then the formation, are they a platoon wedge, company wedge, stagger column, write that all in there. For key terrain, that's all in here as well. So we see key terrain one, key terrain two, write that in here. And how does that benefit the friendly and how does that benefit the enemy? So you just write it down based on what they provide you on here. If it provides both friendly and enemy advantages, write it across like this instead of repeating yourself two times. So then you could, when you're briefing, you could just say it supports both friendly and enemy because this, this, and this. So you only need to say it once. Observation in fields of fire, this information is also in here. So you just copy and paste this all in here. Cover and concealment, same thing as well. Copy and paste, copy and paste. Weather and light data, it's back in here. Copy and paste everything in here. In this section, you just say, does it favor friendly or does it favor enemy or does it favor both? And then you give your explanation why it uh, gives friendly an advantage or why it gives enemy an advantage or why it gives both of them an advantage or disadvantage. Next is the civil considerations. You can leave this blank and just say no civil considerations at this time. And they will, um, yeah, and, and they won't dock you for it. Almost pretty much everyone skipped this part. In the case that you don't want to skip it, um, for whatever reason, I'll just kind of go through it real quick, how it works. So based on what you read in the, um, op ord in here, it's going to provide, um, all that information usually in the, uh, situation section, I believe somewhere around there. Uh, let's see. Situation. Uh, no, I guess not. It's somewhere in the upward though. You'll, you'll be able to find it. Um, but once you read it, you write down like what kind of area is this? Is this an industrial area? Is this a religious area? Um, is this a historical place, right? And you write down how that affects your operation. So if this is a religious area, well, that affects our operations because um, they have a different mindset, right? Um, so in order to win the hearts of the people, we need to, you know, um, we need to tailor like our messaging more towards them or something like that. So you just write out how that, how this affects the operation and then structures. Is there any key terrain? Is there any, like, um, like, is it wooden buildings or is it like concrete buildings? Right. So by having that, how does that affect the operation? So if it's concrete buildings, okay, our mortars and stuff are probably not going to destroy super fortified um, buildings. Or if it's, you know, all wooden buildings, like everything is going to get destroyed easily and shrapnel is going to fly everywhere. 
So how does that affect our operation? Well, that's good for us because we're not going to be there. We're just going to mortar everything and artillery everything and kill the enemy. Or that's bad because we're going to be there and shrapnel is going to fly over. That's going to cause fratricide. So like you just write down why, how that affects us. And then capabilities. How does, how does having, do they have water there? If they do, how does that benefit us? Or if they don't have water, how does that give us a disadvantage? Um, do they have electricity? Can we recharge our radio batteries and everything? Is there a hospital there? Or do we need to go and bring all our wounded men back to the aid station that's like 20 miles away? So how does that affect our operations? Organizations, is there any local agencies, US agencies? If, if so, how does it affect it? If not, just say uh, no answer. There's no organizations at the area. Are there any people there? Are there any civilians? If there is, how does that affect operations? Oh, we got to have positive ID on every single person before we engage a target. We're going to, we're going to accidentally kill, um, innocent civilians. Events. Is there anything, um, important going on? If not, all right, no, no answer. General situation and disposition. This, no change. You already put that in the um, Warno. And then for our disposition, all the instructions are already on here. But here's what basically what you do. You go on to the, you go on to here, the graphics that they gave you. And you brief it. <clears throat> so this is what it would sound like. All right, for our friendly disposition, two levels up. I want you to take a look at this um, map right here. First, we see we got Fox Company, we got Echo Company, and we got Golf Company. So Fox Company's shaping Operation 1, their task is to fix. Their purpose is to prevent. We got us, Echo Company, right here. Our task is to seize. Our purpose is to pass. We got Golf Company at the bottom. We got their purpose is to task or fix. Their uh, their purpose is to prevent. That's literally what you do. Cover each unit's task and purpose. Identify each echelon of enemy unit that you'll be facing. Um, oh, I apologize. This is for the enemy um, sit temp or enemy disposition. So you do the exact same thing, except not use your guises. You'd use the enemy. So let's go back up. So like right here, okay, here, let me orient you to this map. This is the enemy's disposition, um, one level up. Yeah, this one level up. So the, um, so right here, you can see the shaping operation two up here. Their task is to fix, their purpose is to prevent. This platoon right here, their task is to disrupt, their purpose is to allow. There's a reserve element in the back. Their task is to disrupt, their purpose is to prevent. And then we got their shaping operation one here. Their task is to block. Their purpose is to prevent. That's literally all you need to do. And then you you get a good grade on that one. And then right here, go back down here, and you just put in the element that you're fighting. So you're fighting a squad size element because you're a platoon. So you got to fight a squad, um, three to one ratio, right? So you put in a squad in here squad that and then teams are broken up like that right so if we look here their task is to fix and their purpose is to prevent so we write fix and then their purpose prevent and then write the whole thing out and then right here you create two sections and this is where you can just pretty much um, make up your own thing and hypothesize what you think they will do now one of these guys will always be the same as this. And then the other one, you can make whatever you want. Make up whatever you want. Uh, it says 93% strength on the graphic. So we put 93% here. For this capability by warfighting function, that is all provided in the, uh, the company op board right here. Capability by warfighting function, intelligence, movement, fire, protection, sustainment. So you just write down what assets they have. So like for intelligence, they got ISR, uh, ASN 15. So you write ASN 15, 
movement. They have, uh, I can't find anything, sustainment. They got platoon resupply points. So you write resupply points for mission command. Mission command, right? They have, they have FM radios. So write FM radio. That's all you need to do. Next is the organic section. That is all provided right here. So you write down how much personnel they have. So you write 12 packs. Packs stands for personnel. And then you literally copy and paste everything. You just write everything in here. And when you brief, you tell them they have five QJZ, QBZ 95s, which is M4 equivalent. You keep saying it's this equivalent, this equivalent, this equivalent. Like, um, yeah, just let them know about that. Attached. That's basically um, any assets that are attached directly to this squad right here. So if there's if they have like a uh, let's say like a Humvee with a 50 cal on top and it's with them, like you would write that in here. If not, leave that blank. Or higher, these are assets that are not with them directly but can support them. So they did have an ADA and they had mortars. So you write that in here. And then for this one, high value target is um, things that like the enemy needs to accomplish his mission. So we can see that on here as well, anything that's starred. So their type 73 is their high value target. And then a high purpose target is like for us, if we destroy it, it's gonna significantly um, cause failure of them accomplishing the mission. So it's like a huge payoff for us, right? Um, so if we destroy, let's say their ADA, that's gonna be a major win for us. So you write that in there if you if you find anything um, that mentions a high purpose target in the op org. Next is the enemy most likely COA. That is all in here already. So enemy COA. So you can see the purpose of this operation is to, the purpose of the enemy's operation is to, and then you just copy and paste that in here. They will accomplish this by conducting an area defense. So we write area defense, decisive to this operation, decisive to the operation, destruction of US Force I infantry fighting vehicles along Route 5. So we write that in here, destruction of US Force infantry fighting vehicles along Route 5. This is decisive. This is decisive because and then we write what they said in here again. Now for DO, shaping operation one, shaping operation two, this is literally copy and paste from up here again. So you could just write that in here, but just say no change as stated earlier in the um, enemy strength capability and composition slide. And then purpose of enablers. So that is also inside the op ord in here as well. Um, the enablers were uh, these, I believe. So like the ASM fifteen or like the mortars and stuff. Like, how does that how does that innate, how does that enhance their fighting capabilities? Right. So you put that in there. The end state. is also in the op or right here, end state. So the enemy's end state is right here, terrain's end state right here, civil end state right here. So you just copy and paste that in there as well. Next is the enemy sit temp. This is where based off of this information you have with the squad and the two teams in within that squad, you draw on your board, if I scroll down here, you use the map and draw on your board like the enemy's plan. So you put yourself in the enemy's shoes and you say, okay, if I was the enemy, this is what I would do to kill and destroy um, the US forces to reach a decisive point, right? So let's say for example, like, third squad, the enemy third squad, they're supposed to be around here. So then what I would do is like, all right, I'll put my machine gun right here. I'll put my uh, air defense like over here or something, right? And then you draw like the ranges 
the weapon system ranges. So like this machine gun can shoot far to 800 meters. This machine, this weapon system can shoot up to here. Um, this is going to be my primary position. And if we get over overrun, I'm going to fall back to my like supplementary battle position, right? Um, you draw also phase lines for the enemy. So let's say like, once they crossed phase line red, if the US forces cross phase line red, we're gonna start lighting them up with our 249 equivalent. So you would say something like that. And then you can also add in um, you can add in obstacles. So like C wire, C wire and try to like funnel them in and like get them to funnel in, right? Um, you can add in um, artillery, so like pre-planned targets. So like you could say like, all right, we're gonna put a target right here. So once they cross this phase line and they go through here, we're gonna activate the um, the uh, the pre-planned target, which is ZZ1000. So that's, they're going to start getting lit up by artillery. Uh, then we're going to use our QBZ-95 and start shooting at once the um, mortars start going off. So like you're basically giving them a plan. Like if I was do this, I do that. If once the U.S. forces do this, we'll do that. And you're basically showing them like how you're going to kill um, the U.S. forces. So that's all you need to do really. You're just being, you're just playing in the enemy's shoes and giving them, um, giving the cadre member a brief of like what you would do if you're the enemy. From there, this is no change because you already put this all in the, uh, what you might call it, on the war no, but you did not give the con op, uh, the concept statement for the battalion or the company. So you just go back in here and just copy and paste. So let's see. So the battalion concept. So you just like abbreviate all of this and just put that, write that all in here. And then for the company commander's uh, con op, you just summarize in here. Make sure you abbreviate and all that stuff. For your mission statement, even though you wrote that in your war note, this is something you still have to say twice. Make sure you say it twice. So just copy and paste this from the war note. So you just rewrite everything in here. All right, next is the con op statement for you. So the con op statement, you again, go um, copy this portion from here. So purpose of this operation is this. We're gonna accomplish this by this. Decisive to this operation. This is decisive because, and then you just copy that. This is decisive because, yeah. So you just copy all that in here. DO, SO1, SO2, SO3, this is where you start assigning your squads. So it'll be like, all right, first squad's going to be my DO, second squad's going to be my SO1, third squad's going to be my SO2, fourth squad's going to be my SO3. Their task is to do this, purpose is to do that. Task is to uh, support by fire, purpose is to allow uh, the other shaping operations to move, for have freedom of movement. Um, and you just write down like what their task is, what their purpose is. Risk is assumed by and risk is mitigated by is all in here. So you can see we mitigate, uh, we are accepting risk by crossing LD into enemy MELs. So you write that down in here. That's a risk assume. And we will mitigate this risk by crossing during hours of limited visibility. So you write that down in here. End state, uh, just copy and paste as well from here. All right, COA sketch. Now this is where you draw your own COA sketch and it's gonna need to look like this company's COA sketch. So let me scroll back up. So you do it right here. But instead you see how with this company level COA sketch, they use platoons, right? You draw this, but now you're using squads. You're showing them their squads, okay? <clears throat> and it should be drawn like this. Um, just black ink, and then for your guys' um, symbols, use blue. 
and that's all you need to do. And when you're um, briefing your con op right here, you're using the COA sketch, the, the sketch you drew to do that. So you write here phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, or whatever you want to do, right? You can make up however you want, however many you want. You could do three alpha, three bravo, and then phase four, right? It doesn't matter. You write down when this phase begins and when it ends, and then the main tasks that need to be accomplished within that phase. So if we look at a con op right here with the company commander, you can see right here, it says begins with receipt of the op board, ends when the company SPs. Critical to this phase is executing a combined arms rehearsal, platoon rehearsal, and PCC, PCI. You see how it's very short and to the point. That's all you need to do. You're just summarizing the main things, kind of like a book where it has the table of contents. The con op is basically the table of contents for your mission. Now is the schema maneuver. This is the chapter in the uh, book where you have the table of contents, you go to that chapter and it has a long, long uh, amount of words and multiple pages to explain in detail, right? That's basically your schema maneuver. So again, you write phase begins and ends critical to this phase. So you just copy and paste everything up here, down here. Where are you currently located? So you write down your location during that phase. Where are the other adjacent units located? All right, write down where they're at as well during this time. What's the enemy doing, right? So you also write down here on the side, the enemy, they're um, patrolling or they're fortifying their position. All right, what's the threat level during this phase for us? Well, we're at the training assembly area and they're at their own base, so threat level's low. So threat level's low, okay? And then for our fires, um, you could just say no change, just wait till the end. You don't need to put your fires in here um, because that's at the very bottom of this leader's book, your TT Lodak. Next is your narrative. So you brief your plan, you brief the plan and tell them like the exact time, what you're gonna be doing, all of that stuff, what kind of supplies you're gonna draw, What's our weapons control status? Is it hold tight or free? And this information is provided by the company commander down here on the section that says weapon control status. So if we go down, let's try to find it. Weapon control status, phase one is hold. So we got to tell them, all right, during this phase, our weapons control status is hold. All right, is there any CCIRs? Um, no change if we already set it in the Warno. Do we have any CCPs during this phase? Yeah, we have CCP1. It's located in grid coordinate, blah, 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 right? Or we got a Kazovac XP point right here, blah, 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 blah. So this, uh, that's pretty much it for this part. And then the narrative is where you write, like during this phase, it starts from here, it ends here. What we're doing during this phase is we're gonna do this at this time. So for example, we're gonna do platoon rehearsals starting from 0, 0900 to, um, to 10 hundred. And then during that time for platoon rehearsals, they're gonna be rehearsing battle drill six, battle drill five, battle drill four. Once they're done with that, we're then from uh, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, we're going to be doing our PCCs and our PCIs. So you just kind of show them what you're doing uh, methodically, like each hour, what are you doing? What are you doing to get ready? All that stuff. Next is the phase two. All this is the same as I explained up here. So again, give them the, put in the right information in here. Same thing with the enemy, put in the same thing you're doing the same thing up here, uh, down here. So during the second phase, what are the, what's the enemy doing now? Fires, just say no change. So just, we'll get to TT Lodag at the bottom. Narrative, go ahead and explain. And when you're briefing this schema maneuver portion, use the, um, the graphic that they gave you for phase one, phase two. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and find it.
All right, here it is. Okay. So during this um, second phase, you could be all like, all right, this phase begins here and then ends here. We're gonna start off at training assembly area Nate. We're gonna then mount on our Humvees in a um, staggered column. And we're gonna be going, traveling along uh, route Simpson um, for 15 kilometers, let's say for example, until we get to attack position Kathy. So you're basically, you have to give them like how far you're going, how you're going to go, like what formation you're going to go in, uh, which direction you're going to go in. So you can either say at like a this degree azimuth, or you can say in general, we're going to go from west to east or northwest to southeast, right? And from there, you then keep briefing and say, all right, and once we get there we're going to dismount or we're going to um, conduct the seals halt for five minutes from there we once we cross phase line bud we're going to change our formation technique to uh, now a platoon wedge um, in traveling overwatch because now we expect enemy contact and we're going to hit checkpoint one here at checkpoint one we're going to do this then we're going to go from here to here which is about five clicks uh, then get to checkpoint two that's what we're going to do this then and then from checkpoint two, we're gonna keep going down south for another 10 clicks and then get to our DP. So you keep explaining all the specifics, the distance, the direction, your movement technique, your formation technique, um, what to do when you expect contact, like your contingency plans. So for example, if we expect contact at checkpoint one, we're gonna keep moving and while shooting back, that's our plan. You know, so you just need to you just need to have a plan and explain everything in detail. Our weapon control status at this time it's going to be tight. And again, you you see this from this information right here given to you by our company commander. Our CCP is going to be at training assembly area one. Where are going to be our leaders at? Our leader, second platoon leader, is going to be with chalk one. Third platoon leader or uh, platoon sergeant is going to be with uh, chalk two Humvee. What's our succession of command? I'm in charge first, platoon leaders in charge, then platoon sergeant, then weapon squad leader, then this, then this, then this. And then if you have any extra stuff for phase two, you can write that down in here. And then this is uh, extra slides for the rest of the phases, phase three, phase four, phase five, whatever, right? So you write that all down in here as well. And once you write the phases for this stuff, you brief on your board here with the graphic. So let me go ahead and erase this. So this is where getting a battle board comes in uh, handy. So I'll link a description down below for a um, battle board that's on Amazon. So go ahead and get that. Uh, you need the um, 12 by 14 version, technically. That's like what Ibolic wants. But I think most casual members don't really care the size of your board. So if you want to get the 9 by 12, that's fine too. But basically from here, this is where you start drawing like your... Um, this is where you draw your plan while you're briefing on this section of the scheme of maneuver. So you would draw like your uh, routes, like your access, and you draw in black, but right now it's really hard to see because this map sucks. So I'll just draw in blue for you guys. So like you draw your axis of approach. So you're saying like, I'm gonna go up to access Abbey here. And from here we, um, this is our release point. And from our release point, our second squad's going to go on DOA, uh, let's call it ICE. So DOA means direction of attack. It's basically just a route that they're going to go to. So second squad's going to go to DOA ICE, and they're going to uh, in place here and wait. They're going to wait here. And then our weapon squad's going to go to DOA fire. 
they're going to establish a support by fire position right here and they're going to be shooting at trps one the trps two so within here they're going to be shooting they're not going to be shooting anywhere else so trps um then we can also add in like our pre-planned targets and that's where our tt lodak comes into play go check our tt lodak where it's at so you put our tt lodak right here and to find that tt lodak information again you look at this board right here and you scroll at the very bottom or near the bottom of this company level op board right here and then you can find out which one is yours by looking at the observer so primary p means primary alternate a, a means alternate and then you can see right here d26 that means delta company second platoon and then six is platoon leader right uh, and then seven is platoon sergeant so we're echo company third platoon so we need to find ours so right here echo company third platoon platoon leader this one's ours but you just keep going through oh we're in here as well this is ours here ours and ours and then you see these numbers on the side here ab1010 and you just go in here and find out oh, ab100 that's ours uh ab1005 where is that oh right here um kc1005 okay that smoke grenade smoke barrage is here so you you now have this in play and then you go ahead and put the that information in here so you're like right here, KC105, and you just draw out an entire plan, right? You put in your TRPs, you put in your pre-planned targets, you put in your DOAs, you put in your axes, you put in which elements are gonna be where. And then from there, you methodically brief. So you just say like, oh, one more thing. You can also add phase lines. So like, let's say, I call this phase line one. So I'd be like, all right, so during our uh, actions on, we're going to be going up this um, access um, abbey. And once we cross phase line one, we're going to hit our release point, which then means our uh, weapon squad is going to go to the left side. And then our second squad is going to go to the right side. And then our remaining two squads, assault squads, are going to be um, right here waiting. The, um, the trigger for the uh, support by fire to open up is whenever I blow the whistle. And they're going to be shooting from TRPs one to TRPs two. Once they're suppressing, um, then we're going to go ahead and call in for our uh, smoke barrage. Once that smoke barrage lands, our second um, our second squad's going to go up and breach the um, C wire obstacles. And while they do that, the support by fire is going to now shift fire and only shoot at uh, TRP one and nothing past TRP1 on the uh, right, uh, right side. And then at the same time, we're gonna be um, calling in our other uh, artillery fires here, here, and here. Once the breach is uh, completed, we're gonna cease fire on our artillery, and then we're gonna call in our other two squad assault elements to breach through and assault the objective. So that's kind of what it would sound like um, when you're briefing. And then all this other information down here is literally the, um, you already know what to do. You just fill in the appropriate information like I taught you earlier. And then from there, um, that's pretty much it. And then you, when you reconsolidate, you say, all right, our CCP one is over here. So any injuries, any casualties we have, we're gonna bring them to CCP one. At the same time, platoon sergeants calling in nine line medevac or uh, or uh, ambulance. Uh, and once the ambulance gets here to AXP one, then we're going to bring our casualties from the CCP to the AXP. So like that's a, a other stuff you want to add onto your board as well. Now is our TT Lodak right here. We already circled all the ones that we have. So you literally just copy and paste it into here. And you don't need to brief this. You just show the you just show them this um, slide. Just be like, um, "Hey, sergeant, or hey, sir, 
this is my TT Lodak, as you can see right here. I won't go over it. And then they'll just glance at it and they say, okay, good. And then next is the sustainment. So this is also in the, um, it's also in here, the bottom. So again in here, so just copy and paste everything in here. Um, yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. I didn't really put anything for annexes when I was there, so you can cross that out. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a ruck plan. These are just the only main things you need. If you don't have special equipment, leave it blank. This you need, so you got to repeat it again. Uh, anything that's blank here that's not in the op board, just leave it out, right? And then resupply timeline. This is also in the company level con op, in the con op section, so just write that all in here. And then command and signal, super easy. You just copy and paste literally everything that's in here into here. And then once you do all of that, then all you need to say is pending any questions, that concludes my brief. And that's all you really need to do for your, um, your brief. And oh, one thing I forgot to mention, when you're doing your schema maneuver here, you also need to draw a purple star and figure out where your decisive point is. So in this case, our decisive point is once they breach and our uh, assault elements go through the objective, right? So when you're briefing, make sure you point at that star and say verbatim, once they like pass through or whatever, this is our decisive point. Make sure you say this is our decisive point. And you need to say that before 45 minutes of your brief. That way um, you're within the grading standards. If you don't do that, they might fail you. Um, it's cadre dependent. So hopefully you have a good cadre member that's merciful, um, but keep that in mind. Um, besides that, let me look through here real quick. I think that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions in regards to um, the op org, how to brief or anything like that, feel free to just leave a comment down below and um, I'll get back to you in a timely manner. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on how to create a eyeballic level op org.